Hurry into Mills Nissan, where prices will not be beat. Guaranteed lowest prices in town on Nissan models. Mills Nissan, home of the 30-minute or less express purchasing. Visit Mills Nissan today. From Global One, I'm Chris Hayden. Thank you, Chris. Rex Hall Place was hit with Bieber fever last night. <laughs> Hundreds of fans braved the chilly temperatures to stand in line outside Rex Hall Place to see Justin Bieber in person. The young pop sensation has preteens squealing around the world. He's got he's so hot! Amazing! Hot. He has a great voice. Are you going to scream when he comes out? Yes. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's like the hottest person in the world. We're from Nova Scotia, and we love Justin Bieber. And we're gonna get one of his T-shirts. Oh boy! And this was the scene at West Edmonton Mall Saturday as the Ontario native went shopping with a bodyguard. Bieber plays in Calgary tonight. Your girls big Bieber fans? They're not actually. They're not? No, they're kind of anti Bieber. I think they're just trying to be cool. Oh well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Do they love Gaga, though. The forecast? I don't think we do. Uh, no, it's going to be hot. That's it. We're going That's up to the 20s. To mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. We're back at 6 for the news hour. But first, Canada's federal politicians are returning to the House for a potentially volatile session. Global National is up next with Donna Friesen in the anchor chair. The Manitoba native takes over tonight after over a decade as a foreign correspondent with NBC. The new era begins right now. Tonight on Global National, linking the water kids drink to how smart they are. What's down the well that could lower their IQ? Now's the time to, for Health Canada to start looking into this a little bit more carefully. And how concerned should you be? They promised order in the House. But the controversial gun registry has MPs taking aim. And one controversial treatment for MS, two very different results. Just walk like you normally walk. It worked for him. I was hoping that I would walk. Why didn't it work for her? Global National with Donna Friesen. Hello and thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with a story about drinking water. A new study raises concerns about a common metal found in well water in some parts of this country. Montreal researchers found a striking link between manganese and lower IQ levels in children. Manganese naturally leaches from soil into water and in tiny amounts it's actually considered good for you, an essential nutrient. But in some parts of Canada, well water contains naturally occurring high concentrations of manganese. Levels that this study seem to show may be affecting children learning. Global Nationals Mike Armstrong joins us with why scientists are making this link. Mike? Well Donna, we've all heard about the dangers of mercury, how we have to be careful how much we ingest. Well the authors of this study say in the case of mercury, neurological developments affected by one, maybe two IQ points. In the case of manganese, they're saying it's affected by six IQ points. It's not something you see when you pour a glass of water, but if that water is coming from a well, manganese is likely there. The question is, how much? There are some areas in Canada with high concentrations in the ground. For the study, researchers looked at one of those pockets, basically a triangle east of Montreal on the south side of the St. Lawrence River. The team followed 362 children between 6 and 13 years old. We found the relationships. So Researcher Maryse the Bouchard says the link was clear. The higher the exposure to manganese, the more the IQ of the children was affected. She says there are studies on airborne manganese in workplaces and the neurotoxic effects. She expected to see some cognitive deficits from water, but not what they found. I must admit I was not expecting such strong associations. Yeah. Now, manganese was thought to be just a nuisance in water, a bad taste, some discoloration in sinks and toilets. There are no limits based on health concerns because no one had ever shown there were any. Dr. Diana Allen had studied wells in BC's Gulf Islands and found high concentrations of manganese. She says they just didn't think there was a problem. The study that's come out in Montreal today is very interesting and I think is, is going to uh, spark some interest from health uh, care workers and uh, across Canada. Okay. Eight municipalities that draw their water from wells participated in the study, and after being informed of the results, some have already began treatments to remove manganese. The researchers suggest governments look at regulating manganese in water further and suggest people have their wells checked, although some already avoid using their well water. This is the bottled one, which is that clear, and this is my tap. 
Now, one way to avoid manganese is to use bottled water, but there's some irony in that. One of the main uses of manganese is to make the plastic in water bottles. Donna? Mm. Global Nationals, Mike Armstrong in Montreal. Thanks, Mike. To Ottawa now, where MPs returned from their summer break and stepped right into a hot-button issue, the Long Gun Registry. Support, support for it has been split down the middle, but there was a crucial flip-flop today. Our Ottawa Bureau Chief Jacques Bourbeau is on Parliament Hill tonight with the tale of how one MP seems to have tipped the scales. Jacques? Well, Donna, NDP MP Peter Stauffer says he still opposes the gun registry, but when a vote is held later this week, Stauffer says his personal opinion won't matter. The House of Commons is back in business, but on the opening day of the fall session, political news was being made hundreds of kilometres away. In Nova Scotia, where NDP MP Peter Stauffer said despite his long fight to scrap the gun registry, he'll vote to save it. The seat does belong to the people of my riding, and a majority of my constituents have indicated to me their personal view that the registry should be saved, even though I completely disagree with them. Stauffer blames the Tories for refusing to bend on this issue. Last Friday, NDP leader Jack Layton spoke with Prime Minister Stephen Harper to see if they could come up with a compromise. But Layton came away empty-handed. <laughs> Liberal leader Michael Ignatieff showed up on Parliament Hill on the bus that carried him on his summer cross-country tour. Ignatieff says Canadians told him they're fed up with the Conservatives' political tactics. And he keeps persisting on this because he prefers the politics of division to the politics of unity. That's not the way I would want to govern this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tory MP Candace Hepner has also been on the road promoting her bill to scrap the gun registry. Its defeat, she promises, will have consequences. There will be no NDP member and no Liberal member that will ever be able to say again, well, I'll vote to scrap the long gun registry because they will literally, they won't be believed and they'll be laughed out of town. They got elected on that basis. And now they are turning tail on their own um, commitment to their constituents. That's a very serious matter. And uh, I hope their constituents hold them accountable for that. Having broken his promise to gun owners, Peter Stauffer agrees. His decision carries a big political risk. At the end of the day, the people of my writing will choose to say, you went back on your word, Peter. You broke your promise. We're going to make you pay for it. They have every right to do so. Now, this vote will be closed by my count. There are 153 MPs who will vote to save the registry. 151 will be voting to scrap it. And that's just the difference of two votes. Donna? Pretty close, Doc. There was all this talk about guns on the Hill today, but it's not the most pressing long-term issue facing the country, is it? What else can we expect our politicians to be tackling in the opening days of the fall session? Well, we actually saw today in question period what some of those issues will be. For example, the Liberals were focused on the economy, asking why the Tories are going ahead with corporate tax cuts when they're facing such big deficit issues. And the deficit will be a big issue because this fall the Tories are going to have to start revealing where they're going to cut spending to reach their deficit targets. There's also the issue of Afghanistan. MPs have to decide what Canada will do in Afghanistan once our troops leave that country early next year. And finally, there's the fighter jets. There's a lot of controversy over that 16 billion dollar price tag also the fact that there was no com competitive bidding process now on top of all this we do live with a minority parliament there is a chance of an election at any time so you add it all up and it has the potential of being a very lively fall session donna Thanks, Jacques. Ottawa Bureau Chief Jacques Bourbeau. Well, with all of that on the agenda, the Tories have set out a plan to keep MPs on the straight and narrow this fall. Less yelling and more action. At least that's the plan. Peter Harris is here to tell us if there's any chance they will play nice and make it work. Peter? Donna, with MPs back, the hope was they could hit reset in how they behave in the House of Commons. After the first day, it's clear that's easier said than done. Three high school students, all the way from PEI to watch politics up close for the very first time. I find they should be more friendly towards each other because all in all, they're here for the same reason. Heading in, their expectations were low. I think they're going to argue. From catcalls. When this country is deep. To sniping across the floor, MPs tried to tone it down a bit. 
Now, uh, I see the new uh, commitment to decorum is working out well on the government side over here, Mr. Speaker. Hopefully the smooth functioning of Parliament depends on the willingness of all of its members. I appreciate that it only took me, you know, 50 times to But be running able to partisan speaker, battles set the tone this the summer. Rule. Today, the promises of a new tone in the House came close to dissolving into business as usual bickering. The public out there, they expect us to ad behave like adults, uh, to be respectful, and, but as I say, words are cheap and we got to either get down and do it or just just admit that it's not on our agenda. If it was on the agenda, these three students didn't see it. Weird to think that, that that's how our country is run. It reminds me of a bunch of teenagers in high school, like how they're <laughs> in their little cliques and they're all cheering each other on. That could change. A Tory MP's private member bill is still on the books and could overhaul the way Parliament Hill works. That could pass this fall. Donna? Thanks, Peter. Global National's Peter Harris on Parliament Hill. Tropical storm warnings are in effect for the eastern tip of Newfoundland, with Hurricane Igor expected to pass by tomorrow. Fierce winds and driving rain from the Category 1 hurricane lashed Bermuda overnight. Power was knocked out to about two-thirds of the population, and there was significant damage, but no serious injuries. With high waves and strong winds headed their way, fishermen and coastal residents along Canada's Atlantic coast are tying down boats, preparing for the worst. The Canadian Hurricane Centre expects Igor to remain offshore, but warns it could dump more than 100 millimetres of rain, with wind gusts topping 100 kilometres per hour as it passes southeast of Newfoundland's Avalon Peninsula. That's tomorrow afternoon and also into Wednesday morning. The winds of change are blowing in Toronto. A controversial candidate for mayor there has a huge lead in the polls. His name is Rob Ford. He's a city councillor whose conservative approach has earned him a legion of followers who like his pledge to put an end to government waste. As Mike Drolet explains, it's American-style Tea Party politics and it appears to be touching a nerve with voters. We have to put a waste to the gravy train. My taxpayer save the taxpayers. It's not hard to predict what Toronto mayoral candidate Rob Ford will say at any given moment. The taxpayers put an end to the wasteful spending. Is the wasteful spending save the taxpayers? He has one issue, overspending, and he knows it. Indeed, he embraces it. People can relate to the thousand dollars. They cannot relate when I start talking about a budget of 11.6 billion dollars. They can't comprehend. They can't. They can't understand that, but they can relate to the free lunches, the free dinners, and they're sick and tired of it. His mantra has tapped into a growing resentment about waste in traditionally left-leaning Toronto. That a fringe right-wing candidate would have over a 20-point lead in the polls would have been unheard of five years ago. Maybe I haven't tied into it well enough because I don't think anger is a management strategy. But no matter what his opponents do or say, nothing seems to stick to Rob Ford's sudden Teflon image. Even a colorful past that includes a DUI and assault charges hasn't hurt his numbers. And it's not like the other candidates aren't trying to shake things up. Rocco Rossi has launched an advertising Hail Mary. His own ads paint him as a political soprano or godfather. Ford is channeling the resentment and he's doing that far more effectively than the other candidates. But he's not the only one. In Calgary, a right-wing populist with a similar message, Rick McIver, has a huge lead in the mayoral race. And south of the border, Tea Party activists are stirring up political races by drawing on the same issues. There's something blowing in the air, something the winds are changing. And that's drawn the attention of politicians from all levels. Now, anger over taxes and government spending has always been there, but never it seems to this extent. So they're watching closely. Their political futures may depend on it. Donna? Thanks, Mike. Mike Drolet in Toronto. British Columbia now has the nation's toughest drunk driving laws. Police there wasted no time enforcing the stiff new penalties. They came into effect at midnight and so did roadside checks to catch impaired drivers. The legal blood alcohol limit has dropped to 0 .05 with first-time offenders getting a three-day driving ban plus fines. Drivers with a blood alcohol level of 0 .08 or higher or who refuse a breathalyzer get an immediate 90-day driving ban, 30-day vehicle impoundment and up to $4,000 in fines plus any criminal charges. Civil liberty advocates argue the roadside penalties do not give people their day in court. In India, a freight train smashed into a stationary passenger train during rush hour this morning, killing at least 22 people. Dozens of others were injured as cars buckled under the force of the impact. It's not clear how both trains ended up on the same track, but it's believed the driver may have missed a traffic signal in poor weather. The salmon grow just as big in half the time. 
prospect of genetically engineered seafood spawns new debate in the U.S. Should it be served on Canadian plates? Also ahead tonight. I remember being hit, and I remember falling down. He narrowly survived a grenade blast. A Canadian journalist goes back to the place where he almost lost his life. Coming up on Global National. When I was selling my place, my realtor helped with all the paperwork. You'd think I had a paper allergy or something. And I'm not a real people person either. So my realtor helped with negotiations too. All that back and forth, yuck. And when it came to finding qualified buyers. Or a house with a park next door. My realtor had all the answers. So thanks for everything, Dave. Sally. Rhonda. Aziz. Steve. Cheryl. takes to make your house a home. Air with Freshmatic with iMotion, the only continuous air freshener that detects movement, releasing a burst of fresh scent inspired by nature. So day after day, your home always feels welcoming. And Freshmatic Compact with iMotion makes even the tough spaces welcoming. Try the full Freshmatic iMotion range. Airwick, release the freshness of nature. Biosands is a, uh, is a relatively new science. We're learning things continuously and improving things every day. We are allocated a certain amount of water for our process. We don't want to bring one drop more of water on site than you need to. Over 80% of the water that we use is recycled. And because we use CO2 that otherwise go to the atmosphere, we can take much less water from the river. We just keep using that same water over and over and over. Croatia, a stubborn boat owner there, was pulled from his sinking vessel just seconds before it disappeared into a flooded river. The skipper initially refused to leave, but changed his mind when water started pouring over the deck. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is debating whether to approve the first genetically engineered animal for human consumption. A Canadian company has developed salmon that grow twice as fast as normal. But as Eric Sorensen tells us, critics fear if it's approved, it will send our food supply down a slippery slope. It has that fishy smell at the local Washington fish market. Neil Harps likes what he calls natural fish. Doesn't want to see that change. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll take it. Anything genetically modified is not natural to me. If you're taking different components and putting them together, no. But what if your fresh salmon could be brought to you at less cost? Fine. If it tastes good, I'll eat it. Yeah. Yeah. The latest debate over genetically modified foods centers on a hatchery in Prince Edward Island, where Canadian researchers and a U.S. company have inserted genes from an eel-like fish and Chinook salmon into the eggs of an Atlantic salmon, creating Atlantic salmon that grow much bigger, much faster. Genetically modified, I mean, that's enough to scare me right there. The challenge for government regulators in the U.S. and Canada is determining over a relatively short period of time the long-term effects of genetically engineered fish. Testimony at this Food and Drug Administration hearing is dry and technical, but it boils down to a simple question. Is a re-engineered salmon good for people and safe for the planet? The company says yes. Aqua Advantage salmon, because of its growth rate, represents an economically viable, environmentally sustainable solution. Critics disagree. Science cannot prove that this new gene-spliced salmon is completely safe for human consumption over the long term. Watching in the audience a Prince Edward Islander who doesn't like what's happening. We are becoming the home of the first uh, legalized franken salmon in the world, and that's not a distinction we would like to have here in Prince Edward Island. You know, we've been doing that for uh, thousands of years in terms of you know breeding programs of, of animals and, and, and plants, and this is really not that different from what's gone before. If approved in the U.S., it's expected Health Canada would follow suit and pave the way for other genetically engineered animals to enter the world's food chain. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Rockville, Maryland.
And to the markets now, they started the week on a positive note. The loonie gained a fifth of a cent. The TSX rose almost 70 points, and the Dow Jones also closed higher today. It's giving MS patients hope, but does the liberation surgery work? Two patients, two conflicting results. Next. I was hoping that I would walk like all the people they show on TV. Money Wise on Global National is brought to you by Scotiabank. Let the saving begin. Good afternoon. Despite a lawsuit, St. Albert City Council is scheduled to vote on a controversial Habitat for Humanity project. Plus, October civic election is bringing some changes and confusion for voters. We'll explain ahead at six. I'm saving $1,900 more this year? Yes. I'm saving $1,300 more. I'm saving $1,500 more this year. Really? Really? Save every time you pay with your debit card, your credit card, and with every paycheck. And you could save $1,500 or more a year. Let the saving begin. A Scotia advisor can show you how. You're richer than you think. Scotiabank. Secret Flawless Renewal is formulated so when you turn up the heat, Secret turns up the protection. Odor-fighting microcapsules are triggered by your body heat to release a fresh scent for all-day odor protection. At Intact Insurance Company, we think the best way to protect you is to put ourselves in your place. What would you want if your home was suddenly damaged? You'd want help immediately. It's why if this ever happens to you, you can call us 24-7 to talk to a representative who will start the process of getting you back to normal within 30 minutes. Sound like the kind of insurance company you want? Then talk to your broker about us. Intact Insurance. You're back. I'm actually excited about using new products. The Sensodyne Isoactive was different than any other toothpaste I'd ever seen before. I have sensitive teeth as well, so I want to make sure that I can deal with that problem. I love the fact that the gel turns into a foam. It spread all over my mouth and was able to get all areas of my teeth in the back and around. My mouth and breath felt really fresh and clean. Not only does Sensodyne Isoactive make my mouth feel fresh, but it also has that ability to help me with my sensitive teeth. It was just a good first experience right off the bat. That's our new Chevrolet Traverse, and we couldn't be happier with it. Looks great and uses just 8.4 liters per 100 highway kilometers. It's got better highway fuel efficiency than the Honda Pilot, and 30% more cargo capacity, too. Best of all, my Traverse is backed by the best coverage in Canada. Impressive, right? And so is the deal I got. And that's my Chevrolet Traverse. Let's zhuzh up this one-tone hair color. Try nice and easy with Color Blend technology. In one step, get a blend of tones and highlights for a dimension that takes you from drabulous to fabulous. Nice and easy, your right color. Hundreds of MS patients and their supporters rallied across the country today, demanding access to the controversial liberation treatment. The federal government is holding off on clinical trials because MS experts aren't sure if the surgery is either effective or safe. A growing number of desperate MS patients aren't waiting for government to decide. They're paying thousands of dollars to have the surgery done overseas. Our Loren McNabb spoke with two of them who experienced dramatically different results but have one common message. This is Bill Ear in home video shot by his wife two and a half months ago. I just walk like you normally walk. And this is the 47-year-old now. After spending $10,000 in Costa Rica for the controversial multiple sclerosis procedure known as liberation treatment. Best case scenario would have been just to stop the MS. Not available in this country, the treatment is luring thousands of Canadians to clinics around the world. There, doctors use angioplasty to open the neck veins of those with MS. The belief the vein blockages cause many of their symptoms. I don't sleep through the day anymore. Anita Matika paid $50,000 for the treatment in India and has seen some improvements to her right side, but admits she set her goals much higher. I was hoping that I would walk like all the people they show on TV, but I'm having a very slow recovery. 
With varying stories of success, Ottawa says it will wait for the results of at least seven studies currently underway before launching its own clinical trials, likely next year. We cannot open vein of patients if we don't have a demonstration that these veins are actually blocked in patients with MS. And that's what we're trying to achieve. For the ears, the proof is in Bill's step. Mm -hmm. I couldn't walk with him anymore, and I didn't walk with him anymore. He's now able to hold her hand and more. If I had to carry something in my right hand, I'd carry it like this. It's stronger, and his head pains are gone. I have things that have changed that can't be placebo, I don't think. If they do, I should sell it. For now, he's supporting a pending class action suit against the Ontario government. The message, if heart patients can access angioplasty, why can't they? If it works for you, that's great. I think you have to try. Four months ago, I felt like I would be in a wheelchair within two years. Now, I, if I had that wheelchair, I'd be cutting it up for scrap steel. Loren McNabb, Global News, near Sarnia, Ontario. Do your balance on your one. He was caught in the crossfire as a vacation paradise descended into chaos. A Canadian journalist hit by a grenade returns to the place where his life nearly ended. That's next. Good afternoon. The race is officially on. Civic election hopefuls made their way down to City Hall to get their nominations in before the noon deadline. Next on the news hour, we'll take a look at how Edmonton's election is shaping up. Plus, despite continuing public outcry, the province will not fund a controversial MS treatment at this point. And an investment property isn't paying off for owners because of a dispute between the builder and the Enoch Cree Nation. Stay tuned for the news hour right after Global National. Zhuzh up this one-tone hair color. Try nice and easy with Color Blend technology. In one step, get a blend of tones and highlights for a dimension that takes you from drabulous to fabulous. Nice and easy, your right color. I love working with my hands. So when I heard Rub A535 had an extra strength arthritis roll-on, I figured I'd try it. It started to work on contact exactly where I needed it. Own your day with Rub Extra Strength Arthritis Roll-On. It's positive. Positive. We're going to have a baby. <laughs> now, when I was a little boy, at the age of five, I had some in my pocket. The four-door sports car. We're going to have a baby. Nissan Maxima. Innovation for daddy. We're going to have a baby. Innovation for all. See, my dishes keep coming out wet. It's not your dishwasher. You need new Jet Dry Turbo Dry. It's a powerful drying agent for amazingly drier dishes straight out of the dishwasher, even plastics. No more towel drying. New Jet Dry Turbo Dry and the dishes are done. Secret Flawless Renewal is formulated so when you turn up the heat, Secret turns up the protection. Odor-fighting microcapsules are triggered by your body heat to release a fresh scent for all-day odor protection. Sometimes you're busy and can't keep up with the news. Now, the news keeps up with you. Log on to GlobalTVEdmonton.com to get breaking news alerts wherever you are. We monitor developing news all day, every day, and keep you up to date. When news breaks in our city, we're there so you're sure to see it. Get breaking news alerts at GlobalTVEdmonton.com. Last May, Canadian journalist Chandler Vandergriff thought he was taking his last breath as he fell to the ground in Bangkok. He was hit by a grenade while covering violent protests there. Medics even pronounced him dead, but he survived. And now he's not only back at work, he's heading back to Thailand. Here's Francis Silvaggio. Chandler Vandergriff set out this spring to produce a documentary about Thailand's anti-government protests. And there's gunfire being exchanged between the camp and soldiers that are... You know, there's lots of things happening almost every day. There's explosions, gunshots, there's lots of fighting. But as the journalist reviews his work in Calgary, the scar on the back of his head is a lasting reminder he got more than he bargained for. I remember being hit, and I remember falling down, and I couldn't... I couldn't see anything. That was the last thought on my mind. Like, this is it. I'm dying. A grenade had exploded. The Canadian fell lifeless to the ground. The military medics came up and had a look at me, and they took my pulse and they actually declared me dead. It was only after his documentary cameraman rushed to the scene that anyone realized he was still alive. He thought he was filming, you know, 
my dead body. But then, of course, they, they, you know, they, they suddenly heard some, some gargling and some noise, and they thought, wow, he's actually breathing. Chandler was rushed to hospital with 27 pieces of shrapnel embedded in his body. The worst injury was, were, was from three pieces of shrapnel that basically hit the back of my head, shattered my skull, and entered my brain. He woke three days later, paralyzed on the right side, but only briefly. It's all coming back, and in fact, you know, 90 to 95% of my injuries are already recovered. Today, with just some nagging numbness and a small limp, he's heading back to Thailand. I hope it won't happen again, of course. He's actually meeting up with his friend Nelson Rand, the Canadian journalist shot three times just five days before Chandler was hit. One journalist gets shot. I just want to stay in and keep covering this. I think I'm going to play it a little safer, but this is the field I'm, I'm interested in, and it's what I'm going to return to. Francis Silvaggio, Global News, Calgary. Lucky and brave. We leave you tonight with what we hope will be a regular feature on Global National. If there's a place in this country you love, where you live, maybe where you grew up, let us know. Email us a snapshot and we'll choose one each night, a kind of digital postcard, a tribute to you, our viewers, and to this vast country. So tonight, to our viewers in Cove Head, PEI, population 2300 and a bit, thanks for watching. I'm Donna Fries and local news continues now on most stations and I hope you can join us here again tomorrow. Tonight on the News Hour. And the race is on. The nominations are now open. Candidates head to City Hall to get their nominations in before the noon deadline. Do you know what ward you're in? We'll clear up some confusion. Show of support. We shouldn't have to go to another country to get a simple procedure done. Edmonton supporters of a controversial MS treatment join a nationwide effort to make their voices heard. And water woes. Nothing but excuses and one delay after another. There's a battle brewing between a local developer and the Enoch band, leaving condo owners caught in the middle. Now from Global Edmonton, the news hour with Gord Steinke and Linda Steele. Good evening, only 27 days left until a civic election. Today, candidates made it official, filing their nomination papers at City Hall. Now the